In a coral restoration program, one of the most important things that you can do is make sure that you have an ideal environment for your coral clones. One of the ways that that's been done over the, developed to be done over the years is called a line nursery, where a line or a series of lines is suspended in the water and coral are fastened in some way to those lines. It's a, it's a pretty good idea because it gets them off of the ocean floor. They're in the flow of the water. Coral like that current. They like that current all around them. And you can place them in an ideal sunlight situation. And in most cases, if you need to move them for any reason whatsoever, it's a program that lets you, that allows for that. So, somewhere along the line, somebody, a genius, if you will, developed a, a system called a coral tree, which is essentially a PVC pipe or a plastic pipe of some kind that has other arms radiating from it that you fasten the coral clones to in some way. Suspend them from the arms, if you will. That makes it even more versatile because you can, for a lot of different reasons actually, but it makes it easier to keep track of different genospecies, different genotypes. It makes it easier to move those particular things to different locations if it becomes necessary. It's just a, a lot easier management kind of system. So through the years, we developed uh, a system of coral trees for the Caribbean Coral Restoration Program and I wanted to share that with you with other people so that because we feel like maybe it's not the best system or, or the only system but we feel like that it really has a lot of versatility and, and can be adapted to a lot of different situations. So we're putting on a workshop partly to train some of the local workers here so that when they work for us, they know how we want the coral trees built. And then we're going to film it so that we can share that with other practitioners. Also, I wanted you to know that Caribbean Coral Restoration has complete packages of coral trees assembled or just the kit if you want that, that we can ship basically worldwide. So if that's an option you'd want to try, you can certainly get a hold of us on that. And I also wanted to say that if you practice coral restoration in any form at any level, please make sure that you have the proper permissions or licensing from the local authority. All right, everybody ready? Let's go make a coral tree. Okay, I just want to go over the basics of a uh, coral tree and go over the materials and the tools that we need to build one before we get started. So this is what we're going to be building today. And this is, uh, it's all made out of PVC and six foot tall pole with all of these uh, receivers built onto the pole and eventually when we get all this put together that's what you're going to end up with and I'll go over the, the list of materials and all of the tools and then of course everybody will get a list uh, before we end so that you don't have to remember it or write it all down right now so just basically some of the things you're going to need. You're going to need a good drill. You're going to need something to cut the PVC with. It can be a hand saw. It can be any, anything, any saw will work. Any drill will work. You need a couple of uh, just basic uh, tools for uh, tightening bolts and, and that sort of thing. You're going to need, uh, uh, that's about it really for tools. You've got, you're going to have to have three bits and one of them is uh, kind of a specialty goat. It's a saw hole, a hole saw, and it's an inch and a sixteenth. So
size. And that's very important because anything less, anything more, even by a sixteenth of an inch, will not work for what we're doing here. What you're going to be doing with that is you're going to take one of these, which is a four-way, a half-inch PVC Schedule 40 four-way, and you're going to drill a hole right in the center of it. And we'll go over how you center it and how you can hold it while you're drilling and all that later. But this is what you're going to end up with. And that goes over, that actually slides over the end of this and comes down at specific points to make your, uh, to make your receiver. So you're going to need that drill, you're going to need a quarter inch drill, and you're going to need a drill bit, and you're going to need a 3 8 drill bit. Uh, your tape measure is a good thing to have and a uh, sharpie so that you can mark on the PVC that you're going to be cutting and measuring. As far as materials, we'll start out with zip ties and you're going to need three different sizes of zip ties. These are four inch zip ties and they're I think 16 pounds, just a tiny zip tie. That's going to tie your uh, labels onto the end of the arms and you'll understand more about this later. These are the zip ties that tie the coral itself to the arm and I'll go over that with you later too. But they're a, uh, a 40 pound zip tie 8 inches long. And then you need 8 inch zip ties and these are 75 pound zip ties and those are what hold the, the pole to the anchor and hold the float to the top of the pole. So it floats and stays in one place. So the, the PVC that you'll be using is 3 quarter inch Schedule 40 uh, and it comes in, in 20 foot sections. Each one of these poles, if you will, or trunk of the tree is six feet long. So you can get three out of each uh, 20 foot section of PVC. You're going to need hot water PVC tubing. And this is, uh, this is also half inch, but it is hot water tubing. The uh, difference in the kind of PVC that it is. And you'll understand why later. It has nothing to do with using hot water. It's got everything to do with the size and the strength of the material. So um, uh, we have a float ball, and this is what we use on our trees. And it has worked for us well. A lot of different things people use, and there's no set have to about any of not only the floats but any of this. This is just what we do and this is the kind of tree that has worked the best for us and is the most versatile. So that's what we're trying to show you today. So the, uh, this tree is, has a quarter inch uh, set in it, threaded set, and you get a, a quarter inch eye bolt and make sure that it's stainless steel with the nut and that uh, will hold that screws into here and then holds eventually will sit on top of the tree and hold the tree uh, upright in the water. It's important these are designed to sit on top of the water so they work well if you have them only up to no more than 10, 12 feet deep. You get any deeper than that and there's several different problems you could run into. But they're the most versatile and they're the most economical thing that we have found at this point. When you put it together, be sure that you use some uh, uh, 5200 5, uh, caulk hasey and put it on, on the outside of that uh, those threads so when you put it in there it seals everything down because they're not intended to be under the water and they actually will take on water over time 
So we're not going to actually do that in the workshop, but I just wanted to talk to you about that while I had it out and, and, and in place. You'll need some PVC glue, and I like the kind that is wet and dry PVC glue, so it, it's usually the strongest and the most foolproof. I uh, went over the tape measure. You're going to need some unions. There are uh, there's four of these or five of these on the tree and four sets. So you're going to need 20 of these half inch. And again, they need to be the hot water unions. They're just uh, connect. They're actually designed to go on the end of the pipe and then connect another pipe just like it. But we're, we have a little bit different use for them in that when this goes on the tree, this, ironically, fits in there just perfect. And then we have, and then we can put the arms on and have the, the whole thing tight and sturdy like it's supposed to be. The reason we do that, rather than use a full size, just you go ahead and use a full size PVC piece, is because the bigger your arm is in the water, the more uh, resistance it has to the movement in the water and the stronger it has to be. So this turns out to be a lightweight but very strong and very versatile system. We can take these arms, once they're in the water, we can take these arms in and out, take them up, clean the, the coral, clean the arms, whatever, and then come back down and put them back in place. So that's why we developed this system. Very, very efficient for tree maintenance. We identify every tree. And so uh, what we're using are uh, zip tags. They're label tags. They're zip tie label tags. And they're uh, three inches by two inches, I think. And then we're marking them with the thing that we found best is uh, what they use for marking uh, ear tags on cattle. And so the, it, they're called Ytex marker pen. And you can order those, you can order these, Amazon has them, whatever. So basically that's it. The, the way we label the trees, we label the trees for the nursery. And then we label each one of the arms is going to have the heritage number, the ID, the identification ID, if you will, for the coral itself, so that we can track the generations and keep uh, records of who went where and, and who grew best and, and all that. And it's very important in, in uh, coral restoration that we know that. Anyway, what we have found uh, is the best solution for that is uh, we use a, a jet print, inkjet printer and waterproof paper and print out uh, a sheet of labels and then cut them out so that they're, they're this size, a little label like that. And then that's what the small zip ties are for is to put that on the end of the arm and that has the heritage uh, identifier of each one of the corals on that tree and each tree in our system what happens is each tree has an identifier for that whole tree that whole all the coral on that tree are the same heritage in other words so that's basically it the, the way we fasten the zip tie or the coral to the tree this is a represents a, a, a piece of coral that you would be tying onto the tree and so and, and this doesn't happen in the workshop but I just so you see it and know how it works this is how it is it's just loop that around there the smaller the zip tie the better it is because you kind of have to counter how small it is by how strong it is because you want it to last for a while. But when you put that around there, you need to have it really tight. And when you do, you're going to crush some polyps. 
that are in there. That's part of the deal. But if you have any space around that coral, under that zip tie, there will be predators come in there and cause you troubles forever and ever. Otherwise, it, this is a really great system. And the, what we've done to fasten, learned or developed, to fasten that to the arm is we drill a hole in this, and we'll talk about that in the workshop, and, and the spacing and all that. And then it goes clear through, and then we have the same zip tie, just the top end of it. These are reused from trees that we had before. And then that just goes on the top and it hangs on the lit on the tree like that. Really a sturdy way. And then when you're cleaning, this comes out of the way. If you need to use that again, you can clip this off here. This saves the, the stem is the, of the zip tie is long enough that you can use it again. You don't have to throw it away. That, that coral, theoretically, should never come off of that zip tie. That's going to be a mother coral for as long as it lives. So that's kind of how that works, and it's very simple. And one of the best systems that we've come up with that is easy to manage and easy to work with underwater. So that's what I've got for right now. So um, we'll move on to assembly here in just a minute. Okay, Emilio is gonna be our instructor today. And the first thing they're gonna do is cut these 20 foot long PVC pieces into six foot long pieces, 72 inches. And there'll be three in that pipe, so they'll measure out and cut all three of them. We're only going to make one tree today, but they're going to go ahead and, and cut all three pieces just to be efficient. It doesn't make any difference what kind of a saw you have. You can cut this with a pipe cutter or a, a saw of almost any kind. It's very easy to cut. And the the second one and then the third one don't have to be measured because they'll just use the first one to section it off and measure that way. Then the next thing they'll do is measure out where the receivers go on these tree trunks. And so you start out at one end and measure 12 inches and then measure uh, in one foot increments all the way down that pipe and you'll have five marks where those receivers are gonna be mounted eventually. And then at the very end, we put in, uh, just mark for two holes down there at the very end. One of them, on, uh, and they're gonna be at 90 degrees to each other. And that's, actually those go on both ends, and that's one end is where the anchor's attached to, and the other one is where the float attaches to. And the reason there's two holes is so that you have a primary and a safety attachment system, so that your uh, tree doesn't run off or lay down on you sometime. And now the, he's going to drill the holes in the end first, and those are uh, three-eighths hole because those zip ties are the biggest zip ties that you'll use and that makes it easy to put them through. So he drills one hole all the way through then rotates it 90 degrees and drills another hole. And they'll do this on both ends of the pipe to whatever. Now that the tube is ready, the trunk is ready, they've measured off one of the 33 inch arms that go on the tree. And they'll do the same thing with this. They'll use that to measure off the rest of the, the arms that are cut off of that section. And there'll be a total of 20 of these that they cut. So once they get all of these cut, the next thing they do is to measure out where the holes go on these arms. 
and and the one hole, first hole goes at a half inch from the end of the of the arm, and they're using one that they've already measured as a pattern to mark this. So the way to do it is to start at seven inches from the end that's going to go into the receiver, and then mark out six inches. In, in spaces six inches along that until you have the five holes that are going to have the zip ties that support the corals in them. The one on the very end, which is only about a half inch or so from the end, is so that you can put your identification label for the coral itself on there. The tree should be numbered as well, but it usually has a different number uh, that identifies it for which nursery and where it's located in the nursery. Now what they're doing is they're cleaning out those holes. So when you drill a hole like that in the plastic, it leaves a lot of, of filings around the outside and it makes it a rough edge. And those rough edges are an ideal place for all kinds of algaes and sediment to collect, which you do not want on your tree. You need to keep it as clean as you can for as long as you can. So once the holes are all clean, that's what it's going to look like um, for you ready to use on the tree. The next step is to drill the center holes in the PVC cross. These are half inch PVC cross and you're going to drill a hole a tiny hole, an eighth of an inch or so, right exactly in the center of that. And the way those are formed, it will tell you where the center is. You don't have to measure anything to get there. And then you take this hole saw, which is an inch and a sixteenth, and use that smaller hole as your pilot hole to drill all the way through that cross. And that will put it right exactly in the center and that's the perfect size to make that cross eventually go over the, the trunk of the tree. And you can see that the reason we have that block system there is to hold that thing tight while you're drilling. Because unless you have a drill press, this is how you would do that in the easiest way. and it keeps you centered and keeps that thing from flying out being attached to the end of that hole saw and flying out and now he's going to go he went all the way through it and and pulls it off and now one of the things that he's being taught is that you have to take those hole caps if you will out of the end of the the hole saw before you try to drill another one because if you don't they'll all pile up in there and really make it hard for, to get out. So now you see they go right over the, the trunk of the tree and line up with those marks that you made earlier. And he's taking the wet and dry PVC glue and putting in each one of those holes and he's getting it clear down to the trunk of the tree and making it actually overusing the glue in each time he does that. Because uh, there's that's actually a small surface area that uh, is left there on the cross to be able to glue it efficiently onto that pole. The other thing that they're doing here is making sure that these are at a 45 degree angle to each other so that when the arms go in, they're not all directly one right above the other, and that gives the coral more room to grow and you more room to work on it when you're, when you're uh, in the field working. Also, uh, you'll notice that uh, they'll only do these two at a time because the next thing they do is going to be insert the unions or the connectors these little half inch hot water connectors go exactly into those uh, crosses on the 
half inch regular PVC and you can and if you do it quick enough you still have enough glue that it glues those in place and you don't have to re-glue but if you wait and do it uh, any longer time than that then the, the glue is too dry to hold the PVC pieces together. Now that's the, pretty much the tree is assembled once all that glue is dried and now you see how they put the the arms in. This would normally not be done on land. You wouldn't do this until you were ready to put, until you were actually in the water, the tree having been set. But they wanted to show you how you put the arms in and then how they do easily come out. These are the blocks we use for anchors. They're just a, a concrete, poured concrete block. And these are what we use for the floats up on the top. And the only thing that's tricky about these is to make sure that you glue them in with either, uh, well, with this uh, super glue is the best thing to do, so that they don't unscrew at, at, over time and come out of there. And then we put this around the caulking around the top of that to absolutely seal that from any water getting inside that ball. And that's how a coral tree is made. If you have any questions, be sure to get a hold of us. We'd be glad to help. And thanks for watching our video. We hope it helps you in your efforts to uh, preserve and, and help coral survive in these days.